oxygen to get to our brains. We need all that oxygen, Lord God. Lord God, mm-hmm. give us your breath, Lord God. Breathe into us, Lord God. We pray that it's a refreshing breath, Lord God, that we breathe and that we are able to be calm, Lord, that we not worry about things that we can't get done. We don't even worry about the things that we, we're we doing, but Lord God, we just take the time, Lord God, and we, we do what needs to be done, but in a timely manner, in a time that we're not rushing, in a time that it's not going to be too much. We need to do what we can. We sometimes take on more than we can handle because we're so used to doing it all that we don't humble ourselves. We don't take that time. To ask mm-hmm. up for help. We cannot do it all. We cannot do it all. Lord, we need you. We need your strength. We need your peace. We need to feel that, Lord God. We need to just breathe, Lord. God, we just thank you. We pray that you just give us what we need, Father God. Just take that time to just just be in your presence, to not be so uptight, to not worry. We just want to cast all of our cares onto you, Lord God. We want to be anxious for nothing, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. We pray that we listen to our bodies, Lord God. Yes. that we listen, Lord God. We pray that you heal us, Lord God. Pray for healing. We pray for rest, God. Lord God, I'm going to switch it up a minute. I pray, Lord God, there's been so many car accidents in the last few days, and it's only Wednesday. Pray, Lord God, for those who have lost their lives. Lord God, we pray for their families, Lord God, that you give them peace. That you mm-hmm. give them peace, Lord God. We pray that people are people are anxious. People are in a hurry. People are not paying attention. Maybe people are so tired and they're falling asleep, Lord God. I don't know. But we pray that people begin to seek rest. We pray that people begin to slow down. Sometimes our minds move faster than what we're doing. And that causes us to be anxious. And we pray, Lord God, for those people, Lord God. We pray for traveling mercies for those who are out driving. People are driving to work in the morning and all these accidents this week and one last week, Lord God. We just pray for these people, Lord God. We pray that their families, Lord God, that you give them peace of mind. We pray that you comfort them, Lord God, at this time. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God for that peace, for that peace, for your breath, Lord God, hallelujah. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that we stay in your presence and get everything that we need, Lord. Mm -hmm. That we take that time that we don't think about, oh, I got to do this, this, and that, and I got to whatever, whatever, and that stuff will come, but we need to take that time to just spend time with you, Lord God. And we pray that you redeem the time, Lord. The time in the morning, in the evening, throughout the day, we just seek you. We just talk to you. We just take that moment. Maybe we want to, we're on a lunch break and we sit in our car, Lord God. And we just take that time, Lord God, to just spend with you. S- sitting in silence, Lord God. If we don't have anything to say, Just be silent to shut out everything that's around us, all the noise, all of our thoughts, just to shut everything out, the social media, all the drama that's going on around us, the things that we see, the things that we hear. Sometimes we just got to tell people, not right now. Sometimes we got to tell them, I I don't want to hear that right now. Sometimes we just got to let them know, hey, you know, maybe you feel more comfortable telling that to somebody else. I got a lot going on. 
We can't be there for everybody. No matter how hard we try. And somebody else's urgency is not our emergency. However that saying goes. But sometimes what's important and urgent to someone else is not for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us be more honest. Let us let people know, hey, I just, I can't do it right now. I'm sorry you're going through that. I'm sorry you're dealing with that, but I can't right now. Because sometimes we take on other people's problems. We take yes. on their drama. We take on the stuff that they're going through and we make it our own problems. And it's not, it has nothing to do with us. That is their issue. We can't always allow people to vent to us because it's like toxic. It's spilling their garbage on us. Sometimes we, we just can't. Yes. yes. We can't allow it. We have to just let them know, hey, I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe you should write a letter. Maybe you should write that down. Maybe you need to go pray about that. Maybe you need to go speak with someone else who may be able to listen better than I can. Hallelujah. We can't take on everybody's issues. Hallelujah. We're okay to help others, but we can't always take on their, their stuff. Mm -hmm. We are not a dumping ground. Hallelujah. So God, we just thank you and we praise you today, Lord God, for, for rest, for peace of mind, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We praise your holy name, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's time to just breathe. Be calm. I think a lot of us, we all get to that point and right now. I'm also at that point where I just, I need a break, a mental break, just a week, just from everything, just because it's a lot on my mind right now. Praise the Lord. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Let me share my screen. Give me one second. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Alrighty. Where is my Hallelujah. Mm, yep, yep, yep. Lord, do it for me. Oh, Lord. just won't be done so long do it for me sometimes I get desperate and I say it like this I say Lord fix it for me anybody know that only God can do it oh fix it for me Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because, Lord, I have a problem that only you can solve. So, Lord, do it for me. Can y'all play that for me? Right now, I can't wait till tomorrow.
Lord, do it, Lord. <laughs> do it, Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, all right. She's still on? Oh, no. She was having difficulty. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, just thank you for this day. Pray for peace of mind. I pray, Lord God, that 
Use me tonight, Lord. Just give me the peace that I need, Lord. I pray that your people hear you and not me. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I have a short word. Mm -mm, not right now. Not right now. I'm on. Is that an AZR across or across the street? Can I go? No. No, no, no. You're fine. Go to your room. Huh? Go to your room. I'm on. Thank you. You'll be all right. Can't hang with everybody. And that's just how it is. Let the boys be boys. Praise the Lord. Um, um, I'm going to be real short tonight. And I'm going to try to take my time because um, I do tend to get a little uh, anxious when doing this, when being on. Um, so I'm going to slow it down. Um, so I was thinking, um, about changing my son's name at one point and it really wouldn't have been for any benefit of his. It was more for selfish reasons, maybe more for spite and named him after his dad. And I was going to just switch his first name and his middle name. He'll be called by his middle name anyway. And, you know, I was thinking about it and someone had talked me out of it and it made a lot of sense. And, you know, I had seen a lot of um, negative things with the name because it's his father's name and um, just, you know, failure and, you know, just... Um, just a lot of things that just were not good. And God was like, no, he was like, that's what, you know, you named him and that's what it's going to be. And so at this moment, he, um, oops. So with that being said, he recently, um, my son, I was so proud of him. He got on the honor roll and to see his name on a certificate of getting on the honor roll, it just made me so proud. And it really made me rethink of the plans that I was going to <laughs> go through with and changing his name because now the fact that for me his father's name was not connected to anything good and connected to dropping out of school and connected to quitting and connected to all these things that were negative even though that is my son's name it is now attached to victory it is attached to you know accomplishments my son he wants to you know he wants to do great things and it's attached to you know persevering and not giving up so i'm like just really proud of him when i looked at that and it just really did something to me like no son you're going to finish school you're going to graduate with this name you're going to do great things with this name. So my question is, what does your name say about you? What does your name say about you? What or who is attached to your name? Um, you may be in a family where alcoholism is normal. Y'all just having a good time. But then as soon as the alcohol kicks in, people want to fight. People want to get violent. People want to say crazy stuff. And then it gets, you know, to, to something worse when it becomes a problem where people don't know how to cope with reality in life. I had a friend who that was her story. And 
I've never seen her sober and always. And, and I would just check on her to see if she was still living. And two years ago, she had passed because the alcohol got her. She had health problems. She had, um, she just didn't care. And so um, those types of things, you know, or, you know, maybe your great grandfather never finished school. So you quit school because everybody else in your family quit school. Nobody finished high school. So you're like, you know what? I'm quitting too. And so maybe nobody was there to hold you accountable. Maybe they said, oh, you know, they didn't care if you finished school or not. I know, I know some people like that who whole family didn't finish school, but maybe some of the family members went back to finish school, which I can definitely applaud them on that. Um, maybe your mama had you at 15, so you followed her example. You grew maybe you grew up not knowing your father, who your father is, so you constantly try to fill the void by being promiscuous or fathering multiple children with multiple women while escaping the responsibilities of fatherhood. We definitely see that a lot. And um, so, but no, 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 no. It doesn't have to be your story. Um, I've recently found out that I am type two. And um, I was really upset and I just wanted my moment to cry, to to be in my feelings, to just just kind of process that. But you know, I talked to mom, and she's like, you know, that's that doesn't have to be your story. My father, he passed away from complications that comes with being diabetic and getting other things and having kidney problems and kidney failure and all those things, and. I feel like he just gave up. He was a very strong person, but I feel like he just, he gave up because he couldn't do a lot of the things that he was used to doing and he just stopped trying. And that's not going to be my story. I'm going to turn this thing around. I'm going to do whatever I have to with my eating, with which I already started before I've got my results. I'm going to turn this thing around. So that that stops here. I don't want that for my children. I don't want to end up like anybody else because it does run in my family. But so that's attached to my last name, my surname, my family. But it's not going to be attached to me. The good things, the good thing about when things are attached is that they can be detached. You can pull them off. You can get rid of them. Whatever you need to do, they're, it's not permanent. So I see this as a temporary thing and maybe an eye opener to really go hard and do what I need to do. So diabetes, no, it's not my story. And, and also a coworker, well, the principal at the school, she was like, she was like, it's not a death sentence. So. I'm going to do everything that I need to do to be the curse breaker, be the curse breaker, the curse breaker in your family, in your generation, in your community, be the curse breaker. Do you not, um, so stop, stop the cycle, stop the cycle. Jesus is a curse breaker. Do you not follow him? Jesus is a curse breaker. He took on all that for us. He took on the curse of sin and death. He took on all those things for us. So for me, I'm going to be that curse breaker. I'm going to do everything that I have to do. I just, you know, sometimes you just need your moment to process things. And it's okay to cry. It's okay to mourn for a little bit, but then get back to it. Get back on your feet and don't give up. I'm not giving up. I'm going to continue to do what I need to do. And um, so I just want to read Romans 8, uh, 1 to 15. Um, 
And it reads, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, who gives life, has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Five, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, even then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. Um, so I'm going to, to do what is necessary to get out of that, that curse with your flesh, but do it. I'm going to have to do this by the spirit because it's not going to be easy. I'm going to need God on this one. I got to do it by the spirit and just be and be renewed um because we're we're in this world but we're not of this world and so many people i didn't even know that this could be reversed because everybody i know are in the flesh and they just accept it they accept the death sentence and i'm not i'm not accepting that i'm not accepting this thing i'm going I, i'm not in denial but I'm going to do what I need to do to do to reset it, to, 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 to get myself together. And I'm just um, glad that, you know, I've talked to some people and they're like, yeah, you can reset your pancreas. You can, you know, do all these things. And, and so I'm going to have to do this by spirit. Um, so we're in this world, but not of this world. Romans 12, 2. Um, I have here, renew your thinking. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Renew your thinking for anybody who is dealing with family issues and things that they were just used to that's attached to their family and the generational curses, all those things. You have to renew your thinking. And know that you can be the curse breaker in your family, in your community, in your generation. <clears throat> um, second, second Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. I have go to war. Go to war through prayer. Pray, pray, pray. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. 
On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Sometimes I feel like when you, when people get a diagnosis or something like that, or um, they're like, oh, nobody in your family finished school or you know, you're, you're not going to be nothing. And, or, or, or your grandma, she had, she had babies at this age and then you, your mom, and then now you, or whatever the case may be. And then people don't finish school and, and those types of things. And people don't understand that you can pray, pray, pray. You can pray when through sicknesses, you can pray, um, for God to get you together. You can pray for God to work things out. And some people like, they look at you crazy sometimes when you're like, you know what, I'm going to pray about that. And they're like, pray about it. And now it just, it just kind of makes me think if I knew now what I knew then, maybe I could have helped my father. Maybe, but though I don't know where his mindset was. I don't, I know he believed in God. I know he, he turned himself around in that way, but I still don't know where his mind was. His mind was definitely not on the spirit and maybe he didn't know. Maybe he wasn't aware that he could turn things around because he had it for so long. And I was, I was a kid and he had it for a long time. And didn't tell nobody. And it's okay. Sometimes to keep things to yourself. But sometimes people just, they got to know because maybe somebody could help. You just never know who can help. You just never know what direction people can point you in. And um, yeah, and so, yeah, I just wanted to just, just discuss, you know, the family curses. I know my grandma, she always tell me, oh, this run zone, this side of the family and that runs on the, yeah, it's, yeah, run. Run, run away from me. You're not running to me. She's like, oh, well, heart disease and blah, 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 and da, da, da. No, I'm not accepting that. People just seem to accept things because maybe they don't know that you can pray that thing away. You can pray that off. You can go to war for your family. And that's what I need to do. I need to go to war for my family, not just my children, but the generations to come to go to war. And I keep trying to tell my children, you know, you, you got to eat right. You can't do this. And, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's hard. I got sweet tooth. I want some candy. I want, I, I want some bread. I want some pasta. I want some rice. I can't have I can't have none of that, especially right now. But I gotta do what I gotta do. They're like my daughter's like your mom. It's told my mom mom's making chocolate chip cookies. She's like, you want one? Nope. <clears throat> oh, I want a chocolate chip cookie so bad. Can't have it. Can't have it. <laughs> I want it. And that's hard for me because I like pastries. I like my cookies, my cakes. I can't have none of that stuff. Unless I can find something that's sugar free, but right now I'm just not even going to do it. So that that's just hard. But I know, I don't know if you have some families where obesity runs rampant in families. You can see like the whole family might be, you know, obese or whatever. And so, yeah, it's time to get things in order. It's time to break those curses in your family. It, Whatever it is, whether it's addiction, whether it's alcoholism, whether it's being a glutton, just wanting to eat and eat and eat, whether it's gossiping. I got family members that they got, I'm nosy, but I'm not going to gossip, but I'm nosy though. I want to know everything. I'm like, oh, okay. But a lot of times it just goes in one ear and out the other, but I am nosy. I'm not going to lie. And um, then you have some times in, in people's families where you know, you have a lot of, uh, you know, people being not faithful. And my one thing as a child, I'm like, I'm never going to be with somebody that's going to hit on me and blah, blah, blah. And because I've seen it in my family. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, but I was, wasn't specific enough. I was speaking that thing as a, as a young child, but I didn't know about the, the cheating thing. I would have been speaking that like, no, no, no. But I didn't know any better, but now I do. And we, we live and we learn. 
And um, so, yes, um, go to war through prayer, renew your thinking daily. You can't just read the word and just be like, OK, I'm all set now. Just read it one time. It's a constant thing or like people who they get they get saved and then they never go to church. You got to It's a constant thing. You got to keep got to keep going. It's like you have a car. I always tell people it's like you have a car and you don't never get nothing done. You don't never get your oil changed. You never get anything else changed. You never get an inspection. What's going to happen to your car? Mm. So same thing for us. We get saved one time and then don't go to church again. What's going to happen? We got to continue to do this. We got to continue to fight. We got to, we got to not just go to church, not just, just to spectate, but to be involved, to really get a relationship with God for real, for real. And so, um, and I have put on your armor, got to put on that armor every day, getting your word, you, you praise and worship by yourself. You don't even got to have no music on. Just you and God, lift your hands, cry, ugly cry, whatever you got to do, just do it because you got to put that armor on. You don't know what you're going to face every day when you go out there. It's a different fight. It's something different all the time. And so you got to make sure that you're prepared every day. Pray every day. Pray for whoever every day. When somebody's on your heart, pray for them. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to pray for so-and-so. And then somebody's like, yeah, I was sick, but blah, blah, blah. And, and you're like, thank you, Lord. You know, I didn't. I, that person was on my heart. And I prayed for him. So I'm going to read Ephesians 6, um, 10 to 18. That's, that's my favorite, favorite scripture. My favorite favorite absolute favorite let me let me get there myself Ephesians 6 about putting on the armor of God finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power put on the full armor of God not just part not just the helmet, not just the breastplate, all of it. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can <clears throat> extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Put on that armor every day. It's always something. Always something different. Just whew, like I know for you could say. Everybody has something different in their family going on, or sometimes it skips people and or sicknesses, whatever the case may be. And I know with uh, my stepfather, they just did not live long lives. He passed away at a young age. My stepfather, his brother, both his brothers passed away and they all it was all something different they passed away from, but they all passed away at a young age. at it so um yes everybody has something different that they're dealing with but we can't just lay down and accept it we gotta fight 
we have to fight whatever it is. You have people that might deal with, you know, promiscuity in their family, you know, um, people that whatever the case is, it's, it's, it's something and it has to stop somewhere. Mm, let's see. Speak life. Speak life. We speak death so much. Not us, just people in general. Speak death like, oh, woe is me. I got this and that and this is what's going to happen to me. And, oh, I'm dealing with this. And, oh, my goodness. You ever make, meet people like that? Yeah, like just just negative, just throwing a pity party all the time. They're like, what is wrong with you? Get up and fight. And people that you think is strong. Oh, uh, man, got hair. Ugh. Like you have people that um deal with abuse, domestic abuse, all those things, and like. It's like I thought like I thought you were I thought you were a strong person. Mentally, I thought you were strong. And you're putting up with that, you're dealing with that, and you don't have to. Like, well, that's what I'm used to. That's what they call love because, you know, my father, you know, my father was he was like that. So that's all I'm used to. That to me, that's love. That's not love. That's crazy. That's not love. I've seen some stuff too, but I'm not putting up with that. I've seen stuff. People don't know what I went through as a child, what I've seen as a child. I said, oh no. I said, when I grow up, I'm not, I'm not dealing with any of that. I'm not going through that. And you and people have to just speak that. Speak life. Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Whatever that fruit is, whatever you're speaking, you're going to eat that. You're going to eat your words. You're going to eat it. People just accept things. Oh, well, people like whole low self-esteem thing. Oh, I'm this, I'm that, I'm never going to be, and, and nobody's ever going to love yourself. Love yourself. You ain't got to worry about anybody else. If you don't love you, how you expect somebody else to love you? People going around here just feeling sorry for themselves. Some people, they like, some people like that, which is really strange to me. Some people like being in that, that, that funk. They, they like it. They want people to feel sorry for them and all that. And no, like come up out of that. Speak life over yourself. Speak your healing. Speak your, you know, you accomplishing things. Speak, oh, I'm going to be the first to graduate in my family or I'm going to be the first to go to college in my family. Oh, I'm going to beat this thing. I'm going to be the first to, to, to I'm going to be the first to beat type two in my family. I'm speaking that right now because everybody else, my dad had it. My grandmom had it. My aunts have it. I'm going to beat this. I'm turning this thing around. I'm not, nope, I'm not accepting this. I'm not. And so I could sit here and go a pity party. And no, sometimes I'm I'm talking to people. I'm like, hey, I was, I, I'm not saying I, I like, they diagnosed me with this. What can I do to turn this around? Do you have any suggestions? What can I eat? What What not to eat? Keep working out. Drink plenty of water. Do this, this, that, and a third. Or people who are like, oh, well, cancer runs in my family, but you sitting there smoking two packs a day. Come on now. You want to beat this thing or not? I know a lady. I think she's still living. She's on oxygen. She still smokes. I don't understand it. Like, do you want to live or not? So we got to give up the stuff that we like or the stuff that we're used to because it's not always good for the body. The stuff that we like, the foods we like, that drink we like, that high we like, it's not good for our bodies. 
and people want to continue to to go that way. So speak life. Say I'm I'm done with this. Like uh, my so and so was an addict. So and so with the alcohol. I'm not I'm not going to be that. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna do better. And, and so, yeah. And then once you realize all this stuff and you're you speaking life and just remind yourself that you're free. That you're free and stay free. You're free. We some people forget that. They're like, you know what? Especially when you're already in Christ, you're like, I'm free. I don't have I don't have to deal with this. I don't have to. Jesus took care of all that. I'm free. Um, 2 Corinthians 3 17. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3 17. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Are you not free? Is the spirit of the Lord not in you? If the spirit of the Lord is in you, you're free. You don't have to deal with what your daddy, what your mama, grandmama, cousin, auntie, uncle dealt with. You don't have to take on those spirits. You don't have to accept any of that. And, and that's where I'm at also with my kids. Like, okay, well, these people didn't finish school. They dropped out. Whatever their situation was, no. My kids, y'all going to finish school. Y'all going to have diplomas. If you don't want to go to college. It's not for everybody. I'm not going to force them. But if you're in the trade school right now, like my son, he won't have to. He'll be able to get a good job. But I want them to be more successful than me. Do what they want. I'm not pushing them to do. You know how people live through their children. They're like, oh, yeah, I play I play football. I was a quarterback. I da -da 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 -da. I got a scholarship. I got all these awards. Yes, yeah, son, you go ahead. You won't be. And the whole time your child doesn't even like football. Maybe your son wants to play the drums. Maybe he's an artist. Or my son's whole life, people are like, oh, he looked like he should play football because of his size. I put him in football. He he wanted to try it because his 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 pop pop, my daddy, played football and he was great. And he tried it and he didn't like it. So I'm like, that's okay. I I because then people they start to resent you. You make them do stuff they don't want to do. Don't don't worry about it. You don't have to do that. You you're an artist. You like to draw. You like to you know, you got other stuff from me and your your granddad. You like, you know, this. You love cars. That's your thing. Or like people that are tall. Oh, you play basketball? Like, no. Why don't you play basketball? You're tall. Maybe you're doppy. Maybe, you know, you got two left feet. Maybe you just, yeah, your hand, eye, hand coordination is not good. Maybe, maybe you want to play the piano. People look at you and want to judge me like, like people looked at David and judged him like, oh, he's little. He's, you know, he can't. But God wasn't looking at that outer appearance. He was already chosen. So I'm getting on a whole other subject. But just, you know, um, whatever those things are, if you notice, like, you know what? Some saw my family, they dealt with this. And you see a pattern. Be the curse breaker. Bust that thing up. I'm done. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Curse breakers. Amen. 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 Breaking generational curses. It's definitely possible. It's definitely doable. It's all about believing, you know. So we bury that old man, and along with that, burying that old man, all the old curses and everything is buried with them with that old man, and then you rise, become that new creature, that new brand new creature in Christ. So yes, it is doable. 
And the main thing is you got to believe. Trust and believe that what God says is true. And we can do all things through him who strengthens us. Man. We can do it. He doesn't give us more than what we can bear. You know, so, yeah. And it's just to make you stronger. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be better. You're going to be healthier. You know, and you're going to be leading a better, giving a better example to your children of how to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So it all works out for the good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't claim nothing. Nope. Don't claim nothing but your salvation. <laughs> Hell. Praise the Lord. I hope you feel better. I can hear that. Oh yeah. I the reason I couldn't get on video is because I had had a, a video chat with my doctor. And so when I was kept saying I didn't have so when I was going back to re I was gonna go back and re restart my computer, I saw where I was still in that. So when I took that off. I could get into the uh, yeah. He got. I went and got some medicine. He he loaded me up with some medicine. So right. hopefully, hopefully this will take it all away. Well, that's good. So yeah. Praise the Lord. But it's a good. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You have a short of something in your uh, cause it's. Static. Me? Yeah. Is it plugged in all the way? It should be. Well, this is a new tablet. Yeah, something's not right. Something's not right. It's real stat staticky. Okay, I think it's going now. Say something. Hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> uh. <laughs> <coughs> I'm going to try to hear all this. I know. Oh, Have at when Al comes in, have him check that because it's some kind of staticky stuff. Something's not right. Oh man. I got off my phone. Okay, I don't hear nothing. Can you hear me at I hear you. I hear you talk some because maybe did you have a wire under your laptop or anything? No, I got see, I could put it up to my face. It's a little one. Okay, well, now it's gone. It's gone. So go ahead and talk. Well, I'm holding <laughs> it. Denise? Yes. This is for Denise. Um, well, I'm not talking what I heard. I'm talking what I know about type 2 diabetes. I've been free from it since, um, uh, you could say, September, November, well, September, yeah. the end of September. I was a diabetic for, I was on diabetes for, mm. Oh four mm. and somewhere in oh in twenty nineteen um I started taking shots and um most of all the doctors I saw I said, Oh no, no insulin. Um, insulin. Can I get off insulin? I said not ever, because I heard people say you could get off type two. And she says, no, you'll be on this. 
So I didn't like that. So I started finding out what can I do. And starting from 019, but see, you got the mindset right now to do where I had to build up the mindset to do from 02, 2002. That's from almost two years ago. So I got the mindset that, okay, I'm not going to have sugar or salt in my diet. That's in 019. So it's a process unless you can really quit it right then. And so um, it didn't take me long because without after a year, so I was used to not having it. But I ate, if the sugar in an apple, I ate an apple. If it was sugar in something that was cooked, I eat a little bit monetary of it. Not to say, oh, I can't have no sugar at all, but I didn't have the sugar that you dip, like you put in your coffee. I didn't do that at all. I didn't have any salt or season, nothing with, but if it was salt into something, monetarily, I might take a little bit of that. So I stopped eating um, pork, but, it, but the doctor said, you know, sometimes you can have some well because you don't have salt on the pork. You just have it plain, like, you know, you understand? And then the real thing of the um, getting rid of the type 2 diabetes is to eat everything that grows from the ground that'll make it simple for you. To buy everything in the produce part that's green and colorful. So if it got a color on it and it's green, it's so simple. That's what you go to eat with some olive oil. And it'll sound yuck, yuck, yuck four times, but they have different herbs that you can put in it too. And it is delicious after you get used to it. And most of all, you have to do some weight. A little ex uh, exercise is good, but if you only do a little exercise, but anything that you like, like, like potato chips, anything in that family, like, uh, um, bread, a whole lot of bread, maybe one slice of bread or whatever. Or if you love it so much, don't even mess with it now at all. And you'll start losing the weight. And the more weight you lose, the better your pancreas are, um, you know, get, get healed. And mm -hmm. what you're eating. And don't eat any chips, the candy. But now, like once a month, or once every, I don't even say every two weeks, maybe just once a month, get a treat, ice cream or candy, but not a whole bunch. It's a moderation. And they have books on it, too, to tell you how much you can eat. So after you do all of that and you start doing it, you will not have diabetes because you're going to be losing the weight. Um, um, two years ago, I wore 220 pounds. Now I wear 175, and I don't take diet, I don't take an insulin shot anymore. The only thing I take is um, uh, um, trulicity, and that's to keep you from not eating a whole lot. But uh, and everything I. Do Oh, yeah, the sound is insolent. Hey, <laughs> you heard me? I heard that part. Oh, good. Well, that's enough. Everything that's the color in the supermarket. Oh, yeah, it's real. That was real bad.
Jeanette, Jeanette, we don't hear a thing you're saying because of the static. We don't hear anything you're saying. It's still staticky. So what? Oh no. Um. Had to maybe she maybe she tries her phone, but I mean that's definitely good to hear. That gives me more hope as well to know that yeah, so that's good. And um, yeah, I'm gonna be y'all y'all keep keep me in prayer because yeah, I'm, absolutely, absolutely. I'm gonna yeah. close out because this medicine done got me. I'm getting woozy. All right. I what love you guys. Of, what I, kind of medicine is that? He gave me some GM, <laughs> GM cough medicine and some something called Q something where I take two tonight and then I take one a night for four days. And I never do that get you drowsy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going. I love you guys. I love see you. you tomorrow. See you tomorrow night. See you tomorrow. Well, yeah, well, I just want y'all to pray for those uh, men that lost their lives today out there and that construction works on 83 today. Yeah, I heard about that today. Yeah, I, I had they call me to go to the city that um, it was horrific. Wow. You know, they out there working and never made it home from work. So I, I'm praying, so Lord, I just thank you for continuing to strengthen us tonight, Lord. I just pray over this covenant, Lord. I pray over our apostles, our pastors, our deacons, our deaconess, and our covenant, Lord. Thank you. I, I just want to just appreciate it's Lord for your name tonight. I ask for healing over Angela tonight, Lord. I, yes. I just want you to continue to strengthen us and so we can have a better relationship with you. We can grow nearer to you so you can grow nearer to us and we can help others because that's what it's about in these times is to go out there and be joyful, spread the word and help others continually without being vindictive, bitter, or shame. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Um, hope to see everybody tomorrow. Our power, 7 o'clock on Zoom. I'll yes, take your yes. snacks. If we need me to go to the store, get you some snacks. Give me the money. <laughs> 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 I think good night. I love you. Well, good, good night. night.